Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight. Today we'll be looking at Kubla Khan, or Kublai Khan, however you fancy pronouncing it, but he is the dual leader for both Mongolia and China in the newest iteration of the Frontier Pass, so because I have already covered China and Mongolia, I'm not going to talk about their stuff in this video, so I will link their, uh, their leader spotlights in the video description below if you want to take a look at stuff like unique units, unique districts, and the Civilization abilities as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead. This will be a nice and quick one, and let's get into talking about uh, Kublai Khan's ability. I almost said Genghis Khan, but that, that's not quite right. So Kublai Khan's ability is known as Garege, and it makes it so that he gains one extra economic policy slot to any of his government types. He also receives a random Eureka and Inspiration whenever establishing a trade route in another civilization city for the first time. So this is pretty much a economically focused ability. It all pretty much revolves around trade. So the extra economic policy slot, I think, is actually quite good. So so this is just a free extra policy card slot. There are some other leaders in the game that will convert policy card slots and other types, but this one is just a free additional one, which makes it even a little bit better than some of those abilities, because this gives you the freedom to pretty much take whatever you want for this policy. If you want double campus adjacency, you can take double campus adjacency. If you want bonuses to your trade routes, you can take that. So it's kind of like a situation of you pick this part of Kublai Khan's bonus, which is very nice to have because it means you can tailor it to any one of your game. And there are a lot of very good economic policy cards, so this is a pretty good part of his ability. You also do receive, as I mentioned, the random Eureka inspiration when establishing a trade route in another civilization city for the first time. I think that this part of the ability is kind of bad. It's really as like from what I've played with Kublai Khan thus far, I really haven't felt its impact too much. It's it's kind of nice early on whenever you can get you know a little bit. Maybe it can push you towards a little bit of a power spike. But there are a number of things I think make this ability not that good. For one, the fact that it only uh, it only procs in the first time for each civilization. This means that you are going to be limited to how many of these you can get in a game, and that's going to be limited based on the number of players because you can't do this to city states. It only works on other other civilizations so if you're playing like a standard map size where you got eight people then you're only gonna be able to get this seven times which is a little bit of a bummer because if you play on smaller maps then this ability is gonna get worse and worse but it does get a little bit better if you play on larger maps so that is something to keep in mind the other thing that I really don't like about it is that it is just random Eurekas and Inspirations. There's really no way to pick it, so sometimes this can give you something that you want, but sometimes you might get unlucky and get, you know, maybe the Eureka, or Eureka for, or an Inspiration for one of the Texas Civics that you really weren't planning on getting for a while anyways, so that makes it a little bit less good in that respect. Let's now go ahead and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Kublai Khan in the game. Let's now go ahead and talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Kublai Khan and either Mongolia or China in the New Frontier Pass. So I'm going to be also on this page, although I'm not really going to list it, I'm going to talk about how he kind of meshes with both of those civilizations since they do have different civilization abilities. But first, let's go ahead and talk about his strengths. So the thing that I think is very strong about Kublai Khan is that extra, no extra economic policy card that I had mentioned because that just gives you a ton of flexibility. As I mentioned, it's pretty much just like you get to pick what the bonus for him is. So this means you can tailor it to whatever game you want. If you need extra science, you can get that. If you need extra gold, you can get that. You need settler production, you can get that. Which is just a, having that a lot of having a lot of extra freedom like that is something that's very nice to have. As far as his weaknesses are concerned, though, well, this is kind of where the meshing with other Civ's abilities comes in, because I think that his bonus doesn't really line up that well with Mongolia. So Mongolia's entire kit is pretty much centered around domination, because you get the extra you get the extra combat strength from diplomatic visibility, you have the, the unique encampment, the unique uh, horse archer, and when you're playing as Mongolia, you pretty much want to go and beat people up, but the fact that this is mostly a trade-focused, you know, a, a leader ability makes it so it doesn't really mesh quite as well. I get the one thing that they do have going for is that as Mongolia you do immediately form the trade route, but this just this doesn't really count as that much of a bonus. It's more so just that it shifts forward the amount of time until you get the Eureka and Inspiration, so it's not really that much of a difference over what it otherwise would be. It just kind of shifts the time frame there. So I think, you know, on Mongolia, giving up the extra cavalry combat strength and the chance to capture enemy cavalry that Genghis has in favor of Kublai Khan stuff, I think is just not that good of a trade. The other weakness that I had mentioned is that it is dependent on the number of players in the game as to how good uh, Kublai Khan's ability is. So 
if you're not able to trade with a lot of people, that means you're not going to be able to get that many free Eurekas and Inspirations, which is a little bit of a bummer. So if you're playing Kublai Khan, recommend maybe he's just, you know, adding in a few more people on the map or just playing on a larger map size. As far as the overall meshing with the abilities is concerned, obviously I'll, I'll talk about China a little bit here now since I kind of already touched on Mongolia. I think he does work fine with China. I don't think it's really... I don't. I think it's more so like a sidestep compared to Kinshi Huang's ability in terms of what China's kit wants to do because China does get the extra bonuses on Eurekas and Inspirations, which does mesh quite well with the fact that you are going to be getting more when you're playing Kublai Khan. China itself can play like kind of like a passive economic game, which does mesh well with Kublai Khan as well. So I think for that reason, I think that he does work better on China than Mongolia. As, as I mentioned, though, I don't think it's that much of really like an upgrade. I think it's honestly like a bit of a sidestep, perhaps even a downgrade. Um, so that is something to consider. And now let's go ahead and give Kublai Khan his tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, all that you need to know here is that these ratings go on the standard tier ranking scale. So S, A, B, C, D, F in that order. And we're just going to go ahead and give a rating for each of the victory types and then an overall rating, which takes into account some other factors like consistency and, you know, uh, flexibility and things of that sort. So let's go ahead and start with domination. So also just I should mention, I will be giving different ratings for each of the different sieves here. So for domination, I think that he deserves a B for Mongolia and a C for China just because, I mean, all of Mongolia's kit is still pretty much geared, geared towards domination and I think it is still quite decent. As I mentioned, it's less good than Genghis but still good just because the Keshig is a decent unit, the the uh, unique encampment is pretty good, and the extra combat strength from diplomatic visibi visibility is good as well. For China though, I mean, you still, you can play domination but you don't really have any bonuses so for that reason, I think he deserves the C. Science Victory is up next, and I think that both of these personas will deserve a B in Science Victory for kind of different reasons here. So as China, you're able to get that extra completion from your Eurekas, which is going to help you towards a Science Victory. So the fact that you can get a few more Eurekas as Kublai Khan is going to contribute to this and make you at least a somewhat decent Science Leader. As Genghis, or not, sorry, I just said Genghis Khan again. As Mongolia Kublai Khan, you can get the bonuses towards science by getting the Eurekas from your trade routes, but also just, you know, playing domination gets you a lot of land, which allows you to build many, many campuses and really get that science yield up there. So, for different reasons, I think that these guys both deserve Bs in science. Culture Victory is up next, and I think that Mongolia Kublai Khan deserves a C, but China Kublai Khan deserves a B. So this is mainly just about the fact that China Kublai Khan is going to get the Great Wall, as well as the, the boost to Inspirations as well, which is going to help push you through that culture tree a little bit, or the civic tree a little bit faster. And then the Great Wall, obviously, is actually a pretty good tile improvement at this point for giving you both culture and tourism once you reach flight. In addition to this, the fact that he is a trade-focused civ is going to mean that you are going to probably be getting that tourism modder modifier with a lot of other civs if you're trading with them. As far as the Mongolia version, it's not really anything too you know, earth-shattering here. I mean, if you're playing a domination game, then you're not going to be trading with as many people, which is going to harm your ability to get that tourism modifier. And just on top of that, obviously, you know, it, they don't have the Great Wall, they don't have things like that, but you still could go a culture victory as Mongolia Kublai Khan, but it's not going to be quite as good, so that's why I think that version deserves DC. Religious Victory is up next, and I think this one is fairly simple. They both deserve Cs. Neither one of them really has any bonuses towards Religious Victory, but at the same time, you still can go it on both of them. There isn't really any penalty towards it, so for that reason, they both deserve Cs. And Diplomatic Victory is up last, and I think that Mongolia Kublai Khan is going to deserve a D, and China Kublai Khan is going to deserve a C. So the reason I'm giving a D to Mongolia Kublai Khan is because if you go a Diplomatic Victory and you don't attack someone, you're really wasting a lot of your kit if you're going to play Mongolia and not attack somebody. So just for that reason, you are kind of... No, I don't want to say hindered, but you're wasting a lot of your potential if you don't go for Diplomatic Victory, and for that reason, I think that he should deserve a D. As far as China Kublai Khan, not really anything super earth-shattering here, not really any bonuses towards Diplomatic Victory, but you're not really losing that much by, you know, not playing anything towards Diplomatic Victory, so for that reason, I think he deserves the C. And for the overall rating, I think that Mongolia Kublai Khan is going to deserve a C, and China Kublai Khan is going to deserve a B, mostly just for the reason that I've talked about where... Kublai Khan doesn't really mesh that well with Mongolia. The thing is, though, like, Mongolia still has a fairly decent kit, and Kublai Khan still has a fairly decent ability, but the fact that they don't work together very well stops him from being elevated to a higher tier rating, I think. So, because these things are both decent on their own, but don't work well together, I think that, you know, stops him from falling too far down in the ratings, but it makes him kind of just like an average civ and deserving of the seat. 
China Kublai Khan, however, does have some bonuses going for him. He has the synergy with the Inspiration and Eureka buff that China gets. And in addition to that, you know, he wants to play economically. He kind of wants to play a more passive type of play style, which does work on China where you can go for either a culture or science victory. So for that reason, I think he deserves the B. So thank you everyone for watching. I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.